Hello and welcome to learn image processing using MATLAB. In this lecture we talk about the low pass Gaussian filtering in the frequency domain. So just to recapitulate, all frequency filters can be implemented in the spatial domain and if there exists a simple kernel for the desired filter effect, it is computationally less expensive to perform the filtering in the spatial domain. Hence we do the filtering in the frequency domain. Frequency filtering is more appropriate if no straightforward kernel can be found in the spatial domain and may also be more efficient. So what we generally do like we've been doing in the past, we take an image in the Fourier domain, we apply a filter function to it and we multiply pixel by pixel to get the transformed filtered image. Now to uh, get the resulting image in the spatial domain, we have to re-transform it using the inverse Fourier transform. So just to again recapitulate, a low pass filter attenuates the high frequencies and retains low frequencies. So the result is that we get a smooth kind of an image. The high pass filter, it retains the high pass frequencies. So hence um, we get the edges. A band pass attenuates very low and very high frequencies but retains the middle range of the band of frequencies. So we've realized all of these. Now we will realize these using the Gaussian filtering. So why do we use the Gaussian filtering? This is because again the ringing effect is lost. It's not there like we saw in the Butterworth filter. The thumb rule to apply a Butterworth filter is that we generally apply it when we want to apply a wide low pass filter. Whenever we want to apply a narrow low pass filter, we generally prefer a Gaussian filter. So let's see how we realize it using MATLAB. So like before, I will read my cameraman image. We know that this is 256 by 256. So we will create a special filter for Gaussian using F special like we did in the previous classes. So we will say Gaussian. I will take it as 256 because this is a square image. So this is the size of the filter and let's take the standard deviation as 10. Missed out an S there. Okay. Now let's see the maximum value that we have for this filter. You can see that the result is very small here. So we need to scale it so that the center value is 1. So for that I just have this inbuilt function mat to gray. If I apply it on this G I can again check the vac value for G1 and you can see the value is now 1. So I can use this filter. So again I will apply the same function. I will call it AF and ap uh, apply the AFFT shift on the Fourier transform of A. Like before I just need to now get the value with dot multiplier. So this is element by element multiplication of the Fourier transformed image with my filter. I can see the filter that I have created using the FFT to show function which we had created earlier. So that's my filter. Like before I can just get the inverse of this to see how this filter works and I will apply it on AG1 and I will use inverse IFFT show which we had made in the previous classes which you can just see in case you do not remember it to see my final result. So you can see this is a smooth kind of an image but it's more of a blurred image. So since my say standard deviation was 10 I can just increase it. I'll have a bigger bell shaped firm function now. So I'll change my G to maybe 30. Again do the same transformations. G1 is this. Again perform this operation. Do the inverse and see the result. So you can see this is how my image looks like and it's kind of smoothed out. So you can just play around with the values of standard deviation and see for yourself. So this brings us to the end of this lecture. I will see you in the next one. Thank you.